What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Call Tax Podcast. Very excited for this episode today. Had her on a couple weeks ago. I said her name last time, and she laughed at me and made fun of her because I said her name. I made fun of me? No, you made fun of me. Oh. I said, I remember I listened to it to edit it and everything. I said, Kelly Jones, and you started laughing at me. Oh, probably because you said Jones. What's your last name? Well, it's yours, too. I think they could figure out that it's Jones. So I got my wife on the show <laughs> again. Um, so this is going to be the part two. We had the episode before Hadley was born. And so today we're just going to be talking a little bit about leading up to it because there was a lot going into it. There was a lot that happened while we were at the hospital. It's been a lot going on in her, what, three weeks and a day of life. Mm-hmm. So it's been a very, very exciting faith building, emotional good emotions and some scary emotions over the last couple of weeks. And we're going to share some of that with you today. So um, thanks for coming on. I just wanted to say before we start, if you uh-huh. uh, hear me sniffling a lot, uh-huh. I'm emotional about the story. So just act yeah. like I'm not crying. It was, yeah, it, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. Um, just a couple, and we'll get into all that in a little bit, but um, I want to say too, when, and it was funny that you said it earlier, you, before we started recording, you said, it's crazy how like women can have babies and stuff like that. And like a life mm-hmm. can grow inside of them. Cause I was already thinking about saying something like that mm-hmm. uh, when we recorded, it's just so amazing how, um, the human body was just designed to like procreate and to literally grow a human being inside of them and then to be able to carry it for you know the months the pregnancy season and then to have the baby and then once it's here to be able to if you so choose feed it with your body Mm -hmm. you know it's just a crazy it's a crazy thing um i was specifically talking about i mean this is my fourth c-section oh yeah and it's three weeks after and for a couple of days i mean i felt pretty much back to normal so it took, you know, two and a half days probably for me to feel, I mean, two and a half weeks for me to feel completely back to normal, which I think is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You healed very quick. I'm very, I'm very proud of you the way that you handled the whole thing. It was, it was a lot. And like I said, we'll get into all that in a minute, but first we're going to do the big three. Um, do you know anything about my podcast? Nope. Okay, well, I do a segment on here anytime I have a guest called The Big Three, and mm-hmm. it's just three random questions just to kind of get the ball rolling, just to kind of get you warmed up a little right, bit. Right, right, right. So, you ready? Yes. All right. Question number one. So, we love, it's hard, it, it's hard to say now, especially like as Christians, because even when you're, uh, What's like trying to raise your kids the right way and stuff like that. People have so much to say about it and people have so much input and everybody thinks their opinion matters and stuff. Right. So it's like now a crime for a Christian to say, you know, we're, we still not really a crime, but in some people's eyes to say, they still let their kids watch uh, certain Disney movies. (laughs) Yeah. And saying that we let our kids watch Disney movies. We pre-watch Disney movies and then let our kids watch Disney movies. Which is, it's crazy that we even have to say that, but um, yeah, shout out to any parent out there. Just a word of advice is you probably already are, but if you're not, make sure you're screening every single thing that your kid watches because, you know, they're, it's constantly sneaking things in that they don't need to see. And so um, for the most part, I'd say our kids watch older Disney movies. I don't think they watch anything new. Just like Onward. Yeah. Um, Peanuts movie. Yeah, which, which that was 2016. Or I 15. Suppose. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so with that being said, which character um, from Monsters, Inc. would you say that you are, I guess, most like or who you would be if you were in the movie? 
you're gonna this the movie you're, or you're the show laugh. well okay i picked uh somebody from monsters university i picked the what mom you, mean you picked i picked the mom you didn't know these questions before we started recording. What do you mean you picked? Okay. These are this is on the spot. All right. Okay. So let me think really hard. Okay. So I choose. <laughs> Good. I choose the the mom that they live with. That's like the fraternity house, and she's like always doing laundry and <laughs> the one listening to the rock music in the <laughs> yeah and driving Why? like really crazy and stuff. Because I'm a mom, and she's a mom, and she just. Always is wearing like her PJs. I would say so like Randall kind of... Boggs. Who's that? Oh, that's the lizard. The bad guy. What? <laughs> that's you. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Mm-mm. Yeah. Uh, okay. So question number two. This is right back to Disney. If you could have one hour um, free of anybody else. So it's like you by yourself. You could take three people. Would you rather have an hour like that in Disney or in Universal? Well, I'll just say I would just take you. It would just be me? Me, and you, me and you. Wow. And I would go to Disney, and I will say why. I thought about choosing Universal. Yeah. But I think I would choose Disney because we've ridden everything at Universal. Mm-hmm. And we typically ride pretty much every single thing that we want to ride anytime that we go. But A couple at, times, some but of them. Disney... We haven't ridden a lot of the stuff. Like last time no. I wanted to ride Tower of Terror and the line was so long. Oh, it took yeah, like yeah, two yeah. hours. So I didn't get to ride it. Right. So I would do Disney just so I could ride the stuff that I've been wanting to ride and haven't been able to. Because mm. at Universal, I've ridden everything. Yeah, that's true. Good answer. Yeah. Which park at Disney? I knew you were going to ask that. I guess I would have to say... Uh, see, I don't know the difference. Studios? Is it Hollywood Studios? That's that's that where that Tower of time? Terror is. I don't know. Because that's what I mainly want to ride and haven't gotten to. Which one was the one that had that Star Wars ride that you were bummed about? Mm, that that's, uh, Hollywood that's Hollywood Studios, Studios. Yeah. So I guess yeah, that would. That would yeah, that's cool. true. Because we didn't have any like fast pass. Type they do thing fast yet. pass, but I just don't know how to. Access it. Have to do it. Yeah, and you if you hear the baby too, Kelly's <laughs> holding the baby. You hear baby grunts and groans and whines. Yeah. She wants to be a part of the show too today. So she said, I am three weeks old. She's dead asleep. Um <laughs> for now. So question number three. One thing about our wedding mm-hmm. that you would change other than the groom. I knew I knew you were gonna <laughs> say that. <laughs> Um, okay, well, it has nothing to do with you or like uh, really wow. the wedding itself, but something to do with the pictures. Oh. I didn't get like a one on one picture with my dad other right. than him walking me down the aisle. And those, I mean, we're not really looking at the camera any. It's not like a posed picture because we were walking. Um, I think I'm looking down in the one that we have together. I have one with my mom and my dad. And I have one with just my mom. I have one with your dad. I don't right. have any like with just me and my dad. And I really wish that I did because I feel like that would be really special. Uh, yeah, a special picture that I would look back on a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Our wedding was, it was really perfect. The weather and everything. We had our, mm-hmm. our wedding outdoors and her parents have property down on the river here in, um, I guess that would be considered. It's Jasper. Jasper. Mm-hmm. Um is that Georgia or Tennessee? Tennessee. Okay. So, yeah, they have some property down on the river, and it's really pretty. And um, we were able to have the wedding down there, and it was, you know, we didn't have to pay for the venue or anything like that. And then my dad is actually an ordained pastor. He used to be a pastor back in the day. And so he was able to marry us. We didn't have to pay for a, a pastor to marry us. And so it was really cool how we were able to do all those things. And then the money um, that we had saved for our honeymoon we'd add that to what we saved on venue and for someone to um, orchestrate the wedding. And we were able to have a pretty good honeymoon. Yeah. I would say the best honeymoon. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Um, So, you know, I did the new segment. What's up on the last episode. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do that or. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and get into what's up. What's up? 
What's up? All right, so for those of you who did not listen to last week's episode, What's Up is just what it sounds like. It's just a random story of maybe something that happened during this week or in the past, or maybe if you've even seen something in the news that caught your attention that you wanted to speak about or whatever, just a quick, you know, 90 second, two minute, two and a half minute. <laughs> you didn't tell me quick. 45 second. <laughs> what, however long 30 you need minutes. To, <laughs> however long you need to take. Okay. Well, mine's kind of a double story. You because, can go first. Because, okay. Because I thought of something. It was a really short story, but then I thought of something else that happened in the same spot. So whenever I was small, we lived in Rock Spring, Georgia with my stepdad, my dad. Um, and we had a cherry tree in the backyard and me and my dad would get a tube sock and go get cherries from the cherry tree. And now, you know, I have a tattoo of it, um, yeah. you know, for my dad. But then whenever I thought of that, I thought of another story. Uh -uh. Me and my sister, she's six years older than me. We were playing outside one day. I was probably three. So she was probably Finley's age, eight or nine. Mm -hmm. I was standing on this brick wall that we had like a little short, like, I guess like a retaining wall, I guess it would be. Yeah. And I was looking at the driveway where my sister was. And she said, don't move. And I just stood there. I didn't know what to do. And then she said, just run towards me. Oh, gosh. So I ran. I did, there was a giant snake. Oh, no. Curled up next to my feet. I That's don't know if good. she was lying or if it was true. I don't know if it was a black snake. Could have been a, what do they have? Copper mouths? Copper heads? Copper mouths? I don't know. The poisonous ones? Venomous? And, or it could have been a rattlesnake. Because we do get rattlesnakes. Wow. So that was a two-part story. One's a mini story. One's a regular story. That was good. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was trying to think of one as you were telling yours, honestly. You're not prepared. I was not prepared for that, for this part. <laughs> um, But I do have one. I, I remember there was one time when uh, we went on a field trip when I was in fifth grade. And we went to this, like, uh, it was like an Indian, Native American, I don't know what you call was it. Was it a cave? Maybe. I went to one like that, and it was a cave, and then in the gift the shop they sold, stuff. oh, I don't know about a tent. Yeah, they a had all kinds of tents. Tent? No, no, like tents. Hmm. And you go in these different tents, and they would teach you different things, and show you different things from the past and they had a gift shop with different like arrowheads and stuff like that. Yeah. And so um we went on this field trip and this boy who I was friends with, his name was well, I'm not gonna say any names. Say a first name. Uh his his name was uh Don't make one up. <laughs> but I, don't I can tell you were trying to think of one. Uh, his name was Leo and, uh, oh, well, <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to say his name. Um, but anyway, his, he kept asking his mom for, they had a spear, they had like spears and it was like a bamboo stick with some kind of animal bone. Um, yeah. Yeah. As the Arrowhead. spearhead. Yeah. And so he was wanting that and his mom said, no, no, you're going to, you'll hurt yourself or you'll hurt your sister or blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And uh, my parents were not there at the field trip. And I believe my mom came, I can't remember if it was my mom or my dad, came later to the field trip. So we were already there. And so his mom asked me, did I want anything at the gift shop? And I was like, no, no, that's okay. Because she had just told him no. You know, and plus, so I'm not going to. let him get anything. Yeah, not that I can remember. Oh. And so and I was like, no, no, that's, you know, I'm not going to ask another parent for to get me something oh i would have hit them up i would have said yep mm, i no. got some stuff in mind i'm sure you would <laughs> um but i was like no no that's okay thank you though and so my mom got there or my dad whichever one it was and they bought me the spear and she was like i would have bought that for you i thought you said you didn't want anything and i was mm -hmm. like oh well i knew my mom was coming, you know or whatever i said <laughs> so anyways i was all excited and um went home to where we lived at that time, we lived in uh, uh, a duplex in East Ridge. That's very local. 
East Ridge, uh, Tennessee here. It's just outside of Chattanooga. And so um, I had a bunch of friends in the neighborhood and we'd get out and run around and stuff like that. And this one kid, he was from Bosnia. His name was Haris and he was a crazy dude. He like, he could speak English, but you know, he was still trying to learn, you know, certain things. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he was real wild. And so he saw the spear and he's like, Oh, can I, you know, play with it or whatever. I was like, no, 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 I don't want you to, I just got this. It's brand new. I had, you know, that day. And he's like, oh, I'm not going to mess up. I'm not going to mess it up. Was he your age? Um, He was like a year younger than me. Okay. And so I was like, okay, okay, you know, don't mess it up. So he got it and he started to make it like, oh, and, and threw it across the yard. And it went stick, it hit the spearhead, went straight into the ground. And I was like, what the, so I, we go over there and get it, pick it up. And the spearhead was just completely snapped, broken in half. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you know, I had just got it, had it, you know, not even a full day and it was already broken. So all I had was the bamboo stick part of it. Cause the, <laughs> what did you do with the stick? I probably lightsaber. Yeah. Yeah. Lightsaber type deal. So <laughs> at least you could still use the stick. <sighs> Yeah, use it on him, but um, yeah, that that was that sucked. <laughs> That's what you should have done. Yeah, I should have, but pull it out and whip him with it. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, <laughs> so um, that's what's up. That's our little uh, um, back to the back to the past little memory there. Um, okay, so this, like we said at the beginning, we're seventeen minutes in. It goes by so quick. Yeah, it does go by so quick, but. Um, so I talked about it a little bit last week. I was very blessed and fortunate to get two weeks off of work and a little over two weeks, two weeks and two days to spend with the family and just to relax and to be here to help Kelly while she was healing from her fourth C-section. Kelly Jones. Kelly Jones, the one and only. And by the way, Kelly said, you know, she was real nervous the first time that we recorded. <laughs> <laughs> then after we got done, she's like, well, I think I'm just going to take over your show. Okay. First off, it's not my voice. Sounds just like you. <laughs> we'll listen to it back and it will not sound like me. You're not going to know which <laughs> voice was yours and which one was mine. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. She's fine. But uh, <laughs> she's fine. anyway, so yeah, she says she's going to take the take the show over. So I think the audience would like me a little more than you. Why is that? I'm more entertaining. Wow. I'm nicer. Okay. I got a <laughs> soothing voice. Do you? <laughs> no. You put me to sleep. I'm waking her up. Mm. Um, but yeah, before we get into all this too, I just want to say that I'm very proud of how you handled everything that we did. Um, being, you know, through the whole pregnancy period, being able to go through everything that you had to go through, not just with her, but with the other three too, um, just as strong as you were and, you know, being able to carry kids like you have and then go through the C-section and then, you know, she's, if it was, you know, obviously I, I can't have kids cause I'm a male, I don't have a uterus, but, um, if I did and I had to get cut open like that, I wouldn't be trying to get up a couple hours later like you were. Oh, I would get but up you're the just, second they would let me. Oh, I know you do. And um, But yeah, you're just very, you're a very strong, very tough woman. And you're really the strongest woman I know. And I'm very proud to be um, your husband and just um, proud of you through this whole thing. Because I know it took a lot, especially going through all that with her in the NICU and being on meds, mm -hmm. trying to recover, and you were just um, very strong through all of it. Thank you, babe. Mm -hmm. But, um, so, where do you want to start? We can start, I guess, going I'll, there that day. Well, <laughs> let's, let's, I want to start with this because leading up to... <laughs> Why did you ask me? Well, I was thinking about it. <laughs> I was okay. thinking about it. Um, leading up to having her, um, I felt like, and I told you before, like I felt like something was going to be different about her. Mm -hmm. And I wrote 
Um, I I do all these things now that I used to make fun of. Mm-hmm. Like I never would have journaled or anything like that. Diary. It's not a diary. So anyway, I wrote this on um, September 24th. So this was five days before she was born. I said, I wrote, I know Hadley's birth is going to be a turning point in our lives and that she is going to be special and different from the other kids. Not any more important, but something about her birth is going to be different. That's what I wrote. Uh, what is that? Five days before her birth. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just felt, I don't know, the Lord um, just really put that on my heart strongly. Like something was going to be different about her birth. And I remember leading up to it, I was just praying that um, through her birth um, and through her life that she would build people's faith in God and to point people like to him. And so I just had a feeling like something was going to be different. And then a week before it was time to go in to have her, what happened? A week before? Yeah. I think it was right at a week. What? I don't remember. I'll remember once you say it. Well, I'm going to say it. A week before. I don't know. What was the, What was the first thing that was different from her than the other kids? Oh, they, they changed what hospital we were going to. Right. Yeah. Well, first of all, she had yeah, a different but... doctor. Yeah. I mean, it was different from the beginning. Yeah. I, I went to the same doctor for the first three. Mm-hmm. He moved to a different practice where he doesn't deliver babies or he doesn't deliver for like a normal circumstance. I think he does like emergencies. Um, so I had to have a completely different doctor. So, I mean, at the very beginning, it was different. And then a week, we had my C-section scheduled at the same hospital we had the other three. And then a week before, the doctor called me. And I knew as soon as he called, something was going to be wrong. I thought they were going to move us to a different day, which would have been a mess because Mm -hmm. you had already gotten time off work. Right. But then they said that my doctor had a meeting at this hospital and wouldn't be able to do my C-section at the hospital we usually go to. So, they moved us to a completely different one, and I was bummed, but turns out I liked it more. Yeah, and it's it's scary, too, any time that you know you're going to, well, obviously, I can't speak to it. Um, I'm just saying from a, um, I don't even know what the right word is, just from, like, I'm not an outsider because I'm right there with you, but just from, like, my perspective, um, knowing that you're going to go in there and get cut open to get the baby out. You're already nervous about that. And then right. add on top of that, it's your fourth one. And then on top of that, it's a completely different doctor. You don't know how it's going to be. You're comfortable with the man who delivered the first three. Mm-hmm. And then a week before they're saying, you know, okay, we're going to move you to another hospital as well. Mm-hmm. So, you add all those things together and it was a, it was kind of a stressful couple days um, for you before. Right. Yeah. And, and so, then on top of that, you know, I, I try to get the house clean and yeah. everything packed for us and for three oh kids gosh. to stay at my parents' house. Right. I mean, it was just a, it's a busy week right before anyways. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, adding the stress of all the other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, all that being said, we get switched. We go over to the the new hospital. And that was one thing that was different too, was just all the other kids, we had them early in the morning. And so we, it, we were used to getting up at, you know, whatever, four thirty five o'clock to go in there and it'd be dark when we had them. But they told us not to be over there until what, like 11 or 12 oh, o'clock? 11. And then the surgery starts at one. Mm-hmm. And this was on uh, September 29th. And so we go over there and I took, I guess I'm going to re- be reading a little bit as we go because I wrote, I journaled, not diaried, Diary. journaled uh, the whole time we were there. It is. Um, and so this is what I wrote. Um, I guess this was right when we got back to the room after she was born. I wrote, um, Today, Hadley was born 129. See, and this is the thing, too, because 
As soon as she was born, I heard one of the nurses say to the other one, time of birth, and then she said 129. Mm -hmm. And then you're saying that they wrote what? On the birth certificate and on all of her paperwork, it said 121. So I think that we might have misheard her. I think it was 121. I, I don't uh, she, So she was either born at 121 or 129. I'm saying 121 <laughs> because that's what a birth certificate says. Well, I'm just going by what I heard. And so eight, point, uh, eight pounds, eight ounces, 21 mm -hmm. inches long. She was born on a Thursday. The delivery went well, but as soon as they pulled her out, me and Kelly could hear them talking about how Hadley was laboring um, in her breathing. Mm -hmm. And I wrote, it doesn't shock me because I knew that she was going to be different, but I know that God's hand is going to be on her and that everything's going to be okay. And so this was, I mean, it's, it sounds like made up, but I'm like, like wrote this stuff. Like I already knew like everything was going to be fine, even though, because they, they were saying that, um, like, it definitely took them longer to bring mm -hmm. Hadley over than the others, you know, it, it to uh, once they got her out. Usually they would just, like, get them cleaned off or whatever mm -hmm. and then bring them to us. But it took them a little bit longer to bring Hadley over there. And we could hear them saying, like, I just read what I wrote, um, how she was, like, laboring to breathe a little bit. And, I could hear them using the suction on her a lot. And she wasn't crying. She was crying. Yeah, she was crying, but it was like she bit. would be quiet for a long time and then cry like a little bit and then be quiet for a long time and then cry a little bit. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the doctor pulled her out of Kelly, he uh, lowered the, what is it called? Curtain. Lowered the curtain. Mm -hmm. And I have a very weak stomach. I can't handle anything. And so as soon as he lowered it, I wasn't expecting it because he that had not been done like, you know, yeah. um, with the others. So as soon as he lowered it, I kind of like slid down in my seat a little bit, just trying <laughs> to get like to work. Cause I did not want to see anything. Cause I knew if I saw anything, I was like, yeah, this might be game over right here. And you know, she was just, you know, perfect, beautiful little yeah. baby, all that hair. First thing they said is she has a lot of hair. Yeah. She's a big girl. Yeah. I yeah. mean, eight pounds, eight ounces. She was She's our, our biggest, biggest one. Yep. And so oh, she had to say something about it. Yeah. And so um, they uh, brought her over there to us. And they basically was saying, like, you know, she she probably just has some fluids or whatever mm -hmm. um, that she'll just work it out. Right. Yeah. They said that she was retracting. <laughs> yeah. Which means whenever she was breathing, she was like pulling in underneath her ribs like it would kind of not concave that sounds dramatic but it would dip in a little bit which is not normal but they said usually if they do that then they'll clear it up on their own within the first you know hour or two yeah um yeah so we so basically they just said you know get her back to y'all's room and then you know she'll probably just work it out on her own yeah our recovery room <laughs> Not the the mother baby room. It was the recovery room. Yeah. So literally directly after we had her and I was still, you know, numb and stuff, we went to our recovery room and that's when they told us all of this. Yeah. Um, and then I, I wrote, like I said, I wrote throughout the time that we were there. So I'm going to be reading just some of that um, here. But so basically the, the her first day... Um, we didn't really see a lot of her. No, we didn't really see a lot of her because they they didn't like the way that she was retracting and they didn't like the way that she was breathing or whatever. So um, they kept taking her back to the nursery and um, let's see. I wrote at twelve twenty eight. I guess this is yeah the thirtieth, so midnight. Um, they brought her back into our room around 8.30 p.m. last night. She's been so sweet. Her first outfit that we brought for her that she wore was a pink outfit with cherries all over it. Also, um, when they took her the first time yesterday, the nurse saw me looking through the window at the nursery and took a picture of Hadley and printed it off um, to take to Kelly so that Kelly could at least have a picture Um to see Hadley because Kelly wasn't seeing her. Kelly's in the room. She can't get up and walk. So I was 
like FaceTiming Kelly going to the nursery, holding the phone up mm -hmm. and saying, you know, like there she is right there. And um, the nurse saw me doing that and took a picture of her and printed it off. And I was able to take that back to Kelly. And um, one thing that um, I want to be able to put this on YouTube. And so there's not going to be any video with it because. Um, I look a mess. Okay. <laughs> I'll see <laughs> Kelly didn't want to be on camera, so I think she looks beautiful. She always looks beautiful, but um, uh, she didn't want to be on camera, which that's fine. So I'm going to put, I'm going to try to put pictures up here from her birth and from uh, just being in the hospital and stuff like that. And so it'll be pictures along with our beautiful voices oh, yeah. talking. And so, um yeah, so we had the the lady printed off the picture for us to take back to for Kelly, and it was really um, I don't know. It was it was of like all of it was like a blur. Yeah. Like what was what were you thinking about whenever I was kind of going back and forth, kind of leaving? Because at that time too, we weren't even in our, in our room, so. Mm -hmm. I didn't know whether I should stay with you because I didn't know whether we we're going to take you or go look over her. Like, you know, it was just right. like, I didn't really know what to do. And so like, what were you, what was your thoughts? Like, what were you feeling like in that moment? I mean, I was frustrated mostly because yeah. I was used to with the other kids being with them the whole time. And I remember before we even went, I said, I'm not sending her to the nursery. I want her in our room yeah. the whole time. And then like that completely turned around. Um, so, I mean, from, you know, around one thirty until, what'd you say, like 8.30 that night, yep. I probably got to see her for an hour and a half. If that. Yeah. Um, so, I got to do skin to skin with her for, like, not very long. Um, and then um, fed her a couple of times. And, I mean, she was in and out of the nursery. So, they would take her to the nursery, kind of look at her. And then bring her back and say, okay, she might be okay. And then they would take her and then bring her back. And it was just frustrating because whenever they would bring her back, I would be like, okay, good. Mm -hmm. She can stay with us now. Like, I don't have to worry about her going to the nursery anymore. I just want her to be with us. Yeah. And then they would come in and say, eh, it's not really looking good. Mm -hmm. She's kind of breathing funny. And then take her right back out. Which, I mean, now I'm thankful. But at the time, it was, it's just frustrating. You want to be with your baby. The first couple days, especially in the hospital, are like pretty important for bonding with your baby getting to know your baby somewhat um and you had a dream i guess kind of mm -hmm. um rewinding a little bit what, what you want to talk about that yeah so i i don't know was it a couple days before we went I, in it was like yeah two or three days before it was the week of yeah i had a dream that i met our baby and she was i mean she was a little bit older than she is now but she i mean the, that she would have been. So right. she was a few months in the, old yeah. in the dream. Um, but I was holding her and I was like, I don't feel anything for this kid. Mm. Like I'm having trouble bonding with this kid. Yeah. I like in the dream, I felt like she wasn't my, my baby. So I, I think that that was kind of a letting me know that she was going to be away from me. Not saying that I didn't bond with her. Cause I love her obviously just as much as any of our other kids bonded with her just as much as any of our other kids. But I think that was almost like a, you know, a, a little bit of a sign saying something's going to happen. So to kind of prepare me for that. In my dream, she looked completely different than she does, though. So it's not. Yeah. It wasn't her. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that was weird. But yeah, I just felt frustrated mostly. Yeah. I mean, now I'm thankful, but I remember just being bummed out. I would cry because you had to FaceTime me and like mostly I was just seeing her through the phone. Yeah. Seeing a printed off picture of her. Right. Yeah. And it, and it was too like we had it, like people lined up that we wanted to FaceTime and you know all that stuff that goes into having a newborn and so we having were having a newborn when people can't come to the hospital. Yeah. And everybody texting us, you know, hey, where what's going on? Where's the pictures blah blah blah? Where's this? Where's that? And it's like we're trying to figure stuff out. You know, we don't know what's going on with her either guys, you know? And so, um, but the overwhelming support of not only my family, but like the people that listen to this show, I had so many people reach out and say like, they're praying for us. They're praying for 
um, you during the the pregnancy and um, having the delivery, having her, and then praying for Hadley and you know people from our church reaching out. And so it's just such a blessing to have so many people, um, you know, just to reach out and take the time to mm-hmm. to say anything, you know. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, it, it was it was definitely very frustrating, especially not knowing what the deal is, because like in my mind, when we had Landry, Landry was like spinning up a lot and he had problems because anytime you have a C-section baby, they're not squeezed through the birth canal. Mm-hmm. So they have the embryonic fluid in their lungs and their chest or whatever. And, you know, like Landry had to work that out. So I remember I was just thinking like, that's what's going on with Hadley right now. So mm-hmm. like bring her in here with us because we can, you know, we'll, we've done this before. Like we've got multiple kids, like we'll figure it out. Yeah. And so, um, then that next morning, fr- that would be Friday morning. I remember I went into the bathroom to take a shower and it was like, I, I don't know the exact time. It was like seven 30. I wrote seven 45 to eight o'clock. Cause I didn't know. It was seven 30. So I come out of the shower and Kelly's sitting on the bed and she's like, you know, they took her. And I'm like, what? You know what? Yeah. She was with us all she stayed with us Thursday she, night she, slash Friday morning. Yeah. She came back in our, our room Thursday night at probably like what? 830 or something. Yeah. And she spent the night in our room and. Uh, it was a rough night. She didn't sleep good at all. Uh, me neither. I just sat up with her listening to yeah. What Up Our G's new album. Uh-huh. And it was a good, it was a very good album, by the way. Uh-huh. And yeah, me and her just sat there and hung out. I just remember and sleeping sideways with my arm in her bed, holding her patsy in her mouth because she was crying all night. You were hopped up on uh-huh. all kinds of I wasn't hopped up on crazy anything. stuff. Oh I was yeah, mostly on Motrin. <laughs> that doesn't make you sleepy. <laughs> you were out. No, I was not. And uh, I remember looking over there, and I was uh-huh. I was gonna try to. Yeah. Take a video and be like, gosh, you know, it's and to put it on here. You tried to, but you didn't. Well, I couldn't. It didn't bec- happen. I couldn't because anytime I tried, you would wake up and look over there. You are lying. And I was like, oh, you know, I don't. I want her to be able to sleep to recover. She needs some rest. That didn't and so happen. Me and Hadley just sat there and no, no, no. Listen to what a part G together. You maybe listen to and, it by uh, yourself. So anyway, they came in friday morning and they took her and um they said they didn't like the way that she was breathing and whatnot so they took her to the NICU to give her an iv and x-rays and all that stuff and um it was just frustrating but like because of like what you've said already like her first couple days you want to be able to be with her the whole time and for them to just keep taking her and keep taking her and then now they're saying you know we're going to take her to the NICU well at at 7 30 they had taken her to the nursery and we thought, okay, in an hour, she'll just be back. Oh, yeah, An yeah. hour or two. And then they came. Was it? Yep. They came from the NICU and got her from the nursery. So we didn't even know they had moved her over to the NICU until she was already there. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. And then okay, the yeah, NICU yeah, lady yeah, yeah. came and I was like, who is this? And she said she was from the NICU and that they were going to take her. Yeah. So she went straight from the nursery where we hadn't seen her. Yeah. Into the NICU where we weren't going to see her. Yes. Yeah, so, and, and yeah, we weren't seeing her very much at all. And, and mm-hmm. so... Um, the next thing that I wrote on there was they took her to do the x-rays and all that stuff. Um, and I said, I knew that her birth would be different. I said that again, and that she'd be special and different from the other kids. Um, so I'm not shocked by any of this. And I wrote, um, basically just like a prayer to, to God saying like, Lord, I know that she's in your hands now. So, you know, just like look after our daughter in this time and, and, you know, we really didn't know what was going on. We knew she was laboring and breathing, but we didn't know anything other than that. And so um, at that time, I was reading First um, John chapter 5. And yeah, I mean, it was very fitting that I was reading that chapter when all this happened, because one of the verses that was in there, it says, um, it talks about, and actually I saved it in my phone because I wanted to be able to read it. it First John chapter 5, verse 14, it says, and this is the confidence that we have toward him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. So I was just like reading this verse over and over again through these hours, you know, just like praying to God saying like, you know, I trust your word. You know, I have confidence in you. 
um, like you hear us right now. So I pray that you'd put your hand on my daughter, whatever's going on with her. And so like we were texting people, putting it on um, Instagram and Facebook, like guys, we're not really sure what's going on with her. She's, they took her back to the NICU. So if y'all could just be like praying with us for this. And uh, so then we went to finally uh, see her in the NICU around a couple hours after yeah. 1130. Yeah. Uh, that's what I wrote, 1125. Mm -hmm. And what was your first thought about that? Or you want me to go first? Oh, I bawled. I mean, yeah. seeing your baby so small. I mean, she was a big baby, but still so small, wrapped in cords and have oxygen on her nose and, and propped IVs. up on her side. Yeah, propped up on her side in a, a heat bed. She didn't have the like tank light blue light one but she was on a you know one that monitors her and can keep her warm um like a NICU bed seeing a baby in that your own baby in that is hard um mm -hmm. yeah so the whole I mean the whole first two days I just cried the whole time especially mm -hmm. very first seeing her I knew I was gonna cry I told Donovan before we went I'm gonna cry whenever I see her I just know I am and yeah. then you go and like she's hooked up to like even really more than I figured she would be. Um, it just kind of was upsetting, you know. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was more frustrating to for me. And a lot of this stuff that I'm saying right now is just stuff that I wrote because, like I said before, like I prayed that God would allow her to like build people's faith, and I feel like um, the stuff that I wrote down was like. I don't know. I'm trying to think of the right way to white, white way, <laughs> right way to word it. Um, I just feel like it it can build people's faith to see like what God did for her just in that little time. But one thing that I wrote, um, I wrote at 11:25. We went to see Hadley in the NICU where she had breathing tubes and IVs, wires on her chest. But when I looked at her, there was no sadness, just faith, because I know God is going to heal our little girl. And we weren't really sure like what the deal was. We just knew she had a bunch of wires on her and she, you could tell she was struggling to breathe. And so finally the um, nurse came up to us and she said, you could, you tell the technical terms. Cause I don't know. Uh, the what, doctor what? came up to us. Cause when they got her in the NICU, yeah. they did x-rays of her lungs. Um, oh, I wrote something. And they, Go ahead. Okay. they said that she, <laughs> I, I wrote, wrote a lot. Something. I wrote a lot. Uh, they said that she had a pneumothorax, mm -hmm. which basically means, I mean, it can, it can be very severe, very not severe collapsed lung. It can be a lot of different things. She but, had a small air leak in her left lung. Right. She had a hole in her lung. Um, so there was in between like the wall that's on the outside of the lung and her lung air had seeped out. Mm -hmm. I think probably what happened is whenever she came out during the C-section. It put her in respiratory distress. Mm -hmm. So when she was like breathing hard, trying to get her first breaths, oh, it popped part of her lung. Oh, the hole popped into her lung. Um, and that's why it took so long for them to get her suctioned and everything cleaned up and her over there to see us. So she had a pneumothorax. And this was on Friday. Friday that morning. We yeah. were hearing all this stuff and... Um, so then we, it was basically just like for those of that whole day and Saturday, just basically us going back and forth from our room to go in to see her mm. in the NICU. And I remember when we went in there to see her the first time, first of all, you got to scrub down for two minutes, two minutes and an hourglass. Yeah. And it takes forever. And you're just mm. standing there looking over there and you're like, there she is right there. And I, mm. you know, I'm just having to stand here by the sink and scrub down for two minutes. And so. Um, you're doing all that and you're like, I just want to get over there to her. Yeah. And then you get over there to her and you try to like rub her foot or try to rub her head. And she's just got all these wires and stuff sticking off of her. And then they, they're like, uh, we don't want you to rub her. Uh, what is it called? Stimulate. Stim yeah. We don't want to stimulate her. We don't want to wake her up. We want her to sleep as much mm -hmm. as she can. Um, because we don't want her awake and crying and, and putting more stress on that lung. Um, then she has to. And so that whole day, Friday, um, she didn't eat anything, right? Yeah. Because they didn't want her to, to aspirate it. Cause that would make 
Her worse. lung take longer to heal up. Right. And so they they told us, um, which they were very good. I, I was I'm very thankful that we were there because it was a smaller hospital and it wasn't mm-hmm. as big as the hospital that we had the other kids. And so I feel like it would have we wouldn't have gotten as much care and as much um, in uh, brought and stayed into the loop as much as they kept us. Yes. Um, because they were basically like, if we weren't in there, they even had it to where they had a camera on over her bed Mm -hmm. and we can get on our phones and we could look at her if we weren't in there with her. So we could basically have eyes on her at at all times. Unless we were were doing tests or. Yeah. They, they, they cut them off. They were taking her to do x-rays or whatever like that. But I mean, of course that's understandable. And so, uh, we basically just spent most of that time. And I know Kelly on the last episode, um, and uh, Joey was even talking about that, how uh, something about get that girl some hospital food or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Last thing on my that? mind was hospital food, but <laughs> <laughs> I did eat a lot of hospital food. I, I remember um, whenever we went back to the room after we saw her the first time, we sat and we prayed together mm-hmm. um, in the room. And I remember, um, do you remember what she said? Like a little bit after we prayed, do you remember what you said? I hope, I hope. That you remember. I mean, once you start the sentence, I'll remember, but I don't specifically remember. <laughs> Killing me. Uh, All right, I don't have a good I, memory. Well, we whenever um, I prayed, I prayed that God would like keep his hand on her, put his hand on her, and to heal her, mm-hmm. and that he would give us peace through that mm-hmm. storm, through that trial. And then I remember um, a little bit later how you were talking about how you just felt like you had like, a sense of peace over you. Yeah, there was a, I mean, most of the time I was crying, but after we had prayed that time, I did have like a, the, I guess the rest of the day, really, I, you know, didn't feel so in a panic. Yeah. I wasn't panicking as much. I knew she was going to be fine. Yeah. And I knew it was a temporary thing and that it would be over before we even knew it. Yeah. And there was just so many people praying for her and. Um, I think you guys, if you were out there praying for our daughter and, and for Kelly through this, it's very greatly appreciated. This doesn't um, get lost on us at all. We just very, very much appreciate that. And so we went in there um, Friday night. Like I said, we were going back and forth um, from our room and uh, to the NICU. And I remember um, Kelly asked the doctor, when did she think that we'd be able to go home? Mm-hmm. Uh, you want to tell him? Yeah, so she had said they put Hadley on antibiotics to make sure that her lung didn't get an infection like pneumonia or anything else. Um, They said that that round of antibiotics, the earliest, when she finished that, the earliest we'd be able to leave would be Tuesday or Wednesday. Was that right? Tuesday or Wednesday? That's what I wrote. Um, I wrote it set, uh, on Saturday. I wrote it Saturday today, and they're saying earliest leaving day would probably be Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah. So in my mind, I thought we're going to be here till Wednesday. Yeah. Um. What did I tell you? We're going home this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, and you said don't get my hopes up. Yeah. Well, I didn't want to get my hopes up, well, but I'm glad we that I didn't. I as soon as the girl said. Um, the, the, the doctor said it'll be Tuesday or Wednesday. I told Kelly, I was like, we're not going home Tuesday or Wednesday. And I told the doctor and the nurse, I was like, we're not worried. Cause we have a lot of people praying for, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not happy that Hadley had to go through all that. Um, obviously, but I remember th- that weekend they had nothing in the cafeteria, like the cafeteria was closed. Like for me, like they brought Kelly food, but there was nothing in there. They had vending machines Mm -hmm. and there was nobody else even, all the lights were off. So I was having to like leave to go get food or whatever. And I remember going to Popeye's down the road and I'm (laughs) getting uh, some chicken from there. And just on the way, like praying. And um, I just felt, Honestly, I kind of like broke down crying a little bit because um, not like sad for her, but I was just like telling God, like, thank you for, um, I, I knew that she was going to be okay and that 
him healing her. Like I said, this was Saturday and like already telling him like, thank you because I know that what she's going through right now, like it's going to be like a faith builder for people because he's going to heal her and like, she's going to be fine. And I just had like that confidence. Um, like the verse says, like confidence that when we ask him, um, you know, something he hears us when we pray to him. So I was like confident, like it's not going to be as long as they're saying it's going to be. And and they were even saying like, if she doesn't respond what we need her to Tuesday or Wednesday, it could be another 10 to 14 days. Yeah. Because of another round of antibiotics. Yeah. And, but I was just like, now nah, we're, we're leaving. It's going to be a lot sooner than that. And mm-hmm. I don't know. I just felt like God was, putting that on my heart, like just that sense of peace. And Kelly said, you know, like she felt too, Obviously, not to say like, we, we weren't just like, you know, uh, it's, you know, we don't care. You know, it's fine. Yeah. Not saying that. Like we were both like, this no, sucks. Like I said, I cried frustrating. pretty yeah. much the whole time. It was frustrating. But at that same time, it was, it, 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 I can't speak for you, but it, the only part that frustrated me was just like not having her in there with us. Like I want her in here with us. Like it sucks what, she's going through obviously and I don't want our daughter to be in pain or be hurting or anything like that. But it was just like the fact that we're missing, you know, her first couple of days on the earth pretty much um, just because of this craziness. And, um, but. uh, Yeah. I think my, my thought process is a lot different than yours. And I think (laughs) it's just because, you know, I'm a mom. I just birthed her. Um, I was a little more distraught, a little more, um, ups- not upset, but I guess a little, I was more negatively thinking than you were. I like, I don't, I didn't want to get my hopes up. I didn't want to think, oh yeah, we're going to be able to go home this weekend. If yeah, in reality, we're going to have to stay right. 14 days or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that very, I mean, very easily could have been that way. Yeah. So I think you had a little more faith when I had a little more panic and uh, that's there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 what is it? What does it say? Like hope for the best expecting, or what is it? Hope for the best mm-hmm. expecting the worst. Yeah. I mean, you, so you want to be um, like prepared in, in case, I mean, cause that very easily could have, she could have not responded. She could have, her it could have gotten could have worse. Collapsed. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many things that could have happened, but it was mm-hmm. just like the peace that I felt in that moment was like, I knew we were going home that weekend, like beyond the shadow of a doubt. I knew. It. And it's so easy to say, um, you know, obviously after the fact and, and I'm not trying to, and I know that's one thing that's like a pet peeve for me about like people that tell different stories or like pastors and some certain pastors and stuff like that, that'll tell a story and they're like, or like a comedian where they're like, this is, I'm not joking about it. Like this is a a real, like a true story or whatever, blah, 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 blah. And you could tell that it's like fabricated, like some of the details they're making up. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's just. No, you said that the whole time. I mean, because I remember uh, Friday, whenever we first went to see her, you know, I was back in the room crying and you had said, you don't need to worry about it. Because we're going to go home this weekend. Yeah. And that's when I had said, you know, don't get my hopes up. So you had said it from pretty much the very beginning. Yeah. Um, not that I didn't believe that. It's just I really did not want to think, yeah, we might be going home this weekend. And then not. And then yeah. me have to be at the hospital for two weeks. Because I would have stayed with her and you would have stayed home with the kids. And, like, that would have been tough, horrible. Because I'm never away from the kids, ever. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's tough. The whole thing is, is tough on you. who I know um, trying to recover Mm -hmm. from just getting cut open and then you're on meds and then you're trying to get, you know, back and forth to see your daughter. And then you get over there and she's leaned on one side and you can't like, you can barely touch her. Yeah. You can't can't really, whenever you did hold, could hold her, they had a time when she would eat, she would eat every three Mm -hmm. hours and that's when we could come in and actually hold her. Mm-hmm. Even then, when you get to hold her, she's got at least ten. Yeah, just wires and stuff. Cords and her. wires right. and pipes and tubes and different things coming off of her. Yeah, as pipes isn't the right word, but tubes. Yeah, because you had oxygen 
and then eventually got a feeding tube. Yeah. So that was another one added to it. Yeah. So it's it's hard to hold them like that because you're scared. And then with the IV, you're scared you're going to oh, pull gosh, it out yeah. or push it in or hurt her in some way. Um, it's just hard to hold them like that. Yeah. It doesn't feel the same as like holding them. No. Normal. <laughs> no. And. Yeah, so it was, you know, and then you're you're going in there, and she's laid over on one side, and uh, you know they they're trying to um, keep as much stress and as much pressure off of that left side that they possibly can, so we can heal properly and mm -hmm. and everything like that. And it was just, um, yeah, it was a lot, but it was it was very cool to see the improvement as quick as it was and like it was so clear that um god heard like everyone's prayers and god heard our prayers when we we're praying for her and just how quickly because that was um you know um friday that they took her in there and then saturday they were already like lowering the oxygen mm -hmm. um trying to see let's see what i wrote here she was she was originally on 100 percent oxygen which is a lot. Yeah. And then they had lowered her to 21, 21. which they said is what um, we just breathe normally. Yeah. Um, but they said that they had her on oxygen at all just to have that flowing because that would be good for her. That's what they had said. Yeah. I'm trying to see. Where'd that go? Because I wrote, oh, yeah, 21% oxygen. Mm hmm. Um, so I'm com I said I'll, I'm confident she'll be off of it completely soon. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to have her with us and take her home to see Finley, Landry, and Foster. So then the next day, October first, ten thirty nine a.m. I'm That's just reading Sunday. Hmm? Right? Is that Sunday? Must have been. Yeah, twenty nine no. thirty. The first would be Saturday. My birthday was Monday, and it was the third. So. So Saturday. Saturday. Uh, I said we went to see Hadley around eight eight thirty. And they told us her x-ray from 5 a.m. showed improvement. She's down from 2 to 1 on the machines. I, I don't know what machine that was. I just heard them say that. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I know I'm that they sure. went down from 2 to 1. And I wrote... Oh, uh, I think it was pounds or something. I don't I don't know. She, she's not even needing the breathing tube at this point, And her struggle to breathe looks like it is lessening. Yep. It's Saturday today. Oh, so I wrote today. It's Saturday today, <laughs> and they're saying earliest that we could leave is probably Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, but it looks like because the hospital was was smaller, they didn't have all the rooms full. So they said, looks like Kelly can stay the whole time if we need to stay Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, and then I wrote, we went back to see her at 1115. All is good. She's so beautiful. I'm filled with gratitude looking at her. Um, very undeserving to have such a beautiful little girl, but very thankful to have her. And since her birth, it has put so much more of a sense of thankfulness, like in my heart, um, those two weeks with the family, um, it really put a spotlight on me, like how selfish that I can be and how, um, unthankful for things that I have that I like don't think about every day, you know, mm -hmm. um, like being able to breathe properly or like being able to move around or whatever. And so just since she's been born, just that such a feeling of like thankfulness just for every single little thing, because everything is such a blessing that, and we don't even think about it oftentimes, mm -hmm. you know, so just, it, it's been a whirlwind. And so, um, Saturday, it was basically just same as Friday, going back and forth. But every NICU, single time that we went, I feel like we were getting good news. Yeah. 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 So they would say, like, her x-ray came back good. Or they would say, you know, we downed her oxygen to 21. Mm -hmm. And we started seeing stuff come off. So her oxygen came off. They eventually took her IV out. I think on Saturday they took her IV out as well. Yeah. Sat Saturday at 1.30 mm -hmm. um, was when we went and uh, fed her. And it says feeding. I wrote feeding. <laughs> it says like. <laughs> so wrote, I wrote at 1.30 p.m. her feeding went great. Mm -hmm. We both got to hold her and take pictures with her and feed her. Oh, yeah. And they took her IV and breathing tube out. IV is a really big one. Yeah. 
Because that's how she was getting antibiotics, too. So I knew once that came out, they weren't going to have to do antibiotics anymore. Yeah. And so I wrote, um, she ate three ounces while we were there. Uh, We're so excited and thankful for the progress that she's made and looking forward to more healing for this little lady, for her little lung. Um, And then at 4.30, so this was three hours later, we went and fed her again. Feeding time went great. We got to hold her. Love on her. She's free from tubes and wires. And um, I wrote, pray for prayer fully. She'll be fine and keep moving in this direction so that we can take her home as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, those Sat- Friday and Saturday were like the longest days. Like it felt like both of them felt like a week. Yeah. Long each. Hospital time definitely doesn't feel like normal time. Yeah. I mean, you're not sleeping that great. Plus, with her being in there, you're, like, worrying the whole time. The days kind of run together, and it feels like one long day the length of a month. Yeah, it was Yeah, it was very long. And so I, I wrote a bunch of just random thoughts, too, while we were there. And one of the things I wrote, I don't even know if you remember it. I don't even did remember you write, it. Did you I'm I, sick of living out of the vending machine? I did. I I destroyed <laughs> the vending machine. I, I had three musketeers, peanut butter, cookies. Uh, 14 donuts. Uh, okay, okay. That's not from the vending machine, first There's of all. There's a Krispy Kreme down the road. Well, 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 hold on. Hold on. Don ate 14 donuts in a weekend. <laughs> okay, what are, you, what are you... By himself. I was stress eating, <laughs> as your sister said. <laughs> uh, and so I don't remember this at all. But apparently while we were there, I asked you to ask me how my day was going on Saturday. Do you remember this? No. Uh, yeah. I said, uh, Kelly asked me how my day was going. And you said, Donovan, how's your day going? And I told <laughs> you, I'm glad you asked. Uh, my daughter got all of her tubes taken out. I got to hold her for the first time in days. I had Cracker Barrel for breakfast, okay. Popeyes for lunch, okay. and a half a dozen donuts from Krispy Kreme. <laughs> it's been a great day. I'm very thankful. <laughs> That's how you know I'm not lying. He admitted it himself. <laughs> Six in one day. The, cr- <laughs> the Krispy Kreme was right down the street. I've never heard anything like that. And they were fresh that day. Mm-hmm. So, well, yeah. I mean, I got Six. the the hot, fresh ones. I mean, you're there's the especially when it's no, it's just glazed. It doesn't have any toppings or any fillings just or anything glazed. like that. It's bread. So they're easy to eat. I mean, you could sit, you could pull out to the red light and eat two of them while, before the light turns green. Yeah. And then throw up when you get home. I loved it. It was, <laughs> it was so good. Uh, so yeah, I brought the, um, the nurses and Kelly was a sweetheart too. She made all the nurses and stuff, little goodie bags with pins and candy and hair bands, lunch, hair bands, and face masks. And, uh, one of the trips to Krispy Kreme, I brought back a dozen for the, Nurses on the floor. The other four trips, though. What four? I, th- I only went <laughs> tw- two or three times. So you ate 14 donuts over the span of two or three trips to the Krispy Kreme. Something like that. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> Sound like Dusty Slay. We're having a good time eating donuts. Yeah, you hospital. were having a good time eating donuts. I'm like sitting in the bed crying. <laughs> Having doctors and nurses come in and <laughs> push on things and check yeah, things. And... Yeah, that was, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. And then at, in that time too, um, I was reading, like I said earlier, I was reading First John. But while we were there in the hospital, I felt like um, I needed to go back to the Old Testament. So I was reading the book of Ecclesiastes and I read that whole book of the Bible while we were in the hospital. And um, one thing that I wrote was just um, that sense of thankfulness um, and thankful for wisdom because that book, there's so much wisdom in there. And um, so I wrote, don't take, um, Solomon talks about how life is basically a few days because it goes by so quickly. And and so he said, don't take the few days of life for granted. Every day is such a gift. Be satisfied with what you have. Don't put so much stock in possessions um, because like, uh, I guess it's Ecclesiastes 115 says, um, uh, no, no, no. This is chapter five, verse 15 says, when you die, you came, 
you go same as you came. You know, like you can't you were born in this earth with nothing, you leave with nothing. So um really just be thankful for like the things that are more important, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, like your health, like, you know, your family, um, you know, things like that. And so that was really just like the main thing that the Lord put on me the whole time we were in there. I was just like, be more thankful. Um you know, have have faith in me. Like, I'll take care of you if you are like fully trusting in me. And he did that for us with Hadley. And, um, you know, they're telling us the early that we could leave. It was, like she said, Tuesday or Wednesday. And uh, let's see. I wrote a couple other things about the book of Ecclesiastes. And then ten two, so Sunday, mm -hmm. I wrote, and I don't, I'm not sure what time this was. I didn't write it. I just wrote, "What a day! It's been a long last couple of days." Um, so this is, like we said a second ago, she went in on Friday. This was Sunday. Um, she went to the NICU on Friday. Yeah, we had been in the hospital since Thursday. Yeah, yeah, but I mean the NICU. Yeah, I was just trying to make yeah, sure yeah, yeah. Um, timeline is straight. Friday, and then Sunday we go in there to see her, and. Uh, I said, we went to go see Hadley this morning, and while we're scrubbing in, one of the nurses said, well, I think she's going home today. Mm -hmm. And I wrote, I'm just so thankful. Um, so we have both, of course, were elated with this news. And then I was crying from happiness, so I literally yeah. cried all weekend. <laughs> and so we watched a CPR video. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, we learned a lot. Learned how to do CPR. On an infant, not a grown-up. And then we went back to the room and prepared to leave. And when I say prepared, I mean Kelly did it all. Mm -hmm. While I went to Popeye's and Krispy okay. Kreme okay. to get another half dozen donuts. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then I wrote, I'm, I'm just writing exactly what I remember. So some <laughs> things might be out of order a little bit. It was all kind of a blur. Um, so we went to get her, changed her into her little pinkish red outfit with little red hearts. Pinkish red? Pinkish red it's outfit. like bubblegum pink with red hearts. Yeah, yeah. Pink. I think I meant pink and red. I think you don't know your colors. No, I do. Pinkish, pink and red outfit with little red hearts on it with a little bow on her head. Um, and so obviously we're telling people keeping family and stuff up to date and our kids were staying with Kelly's parents. And so basically we were planning, um, you know, what we were going to do if we had to stay till Tuesday or Wednesday. And so Sunday um, we had talked to her mom and we said, you know, I'll come up there and get the kids and I'll take them back to the house. Kelly's going to stay at the hospital and I will, Take whenever you guys are able to watch the kids, I'll bring them back up there to y'all's house, and then I'll go back down to the hospital to be with Hadley and Kelly. And um, little did they know, we were coming home. We got discharged. <laughs> and so uh, we're packed up, and we don't tell them like we're on the way. And so, um, well, before I talk about that, do you have anything? Anything else in the hospital? Um, not really. I'm just, I'm thankful for the nurse that we had yeah. that that pushed for Hadley to go back to the nursery that last time. Yeah. That led for her to go to the NICU because without that, we could have brought Hadley home. Yeah. And then her lung collapsed, and that's that's a lot more dangerous than what actually happened. Yeah. Um. So I'm glad that they caught it before we left. Even though it was frustrating at the time, now I'm glad. Yeah. So I'm thankful for the nurses. I wish I remembered her name. Yeah. I guess that's it, though. That and the donuts, that's all I can think of. Hospital time. Yeah, it was, uh, It. I mean, it felt, it's crazy to think that it was only... Friday through Sunday, mm -hmm. and it felt so much longer than that. Yeah. And uh, so, like I said, Kelly packed everything up. I at least packed the car up. 
You at least ate donuts while I was packing. I pa- up. Okay, let's kind of relax a little bit. No. With the accusations. It's not an accusation if you didn't. So, a couple of those donuts didn't get eaten. Granted, they were your donuts. Yeah, all yours got eaten. Wow. <laughs> I mean, you buy, especially at Krispy Kreme now, I mean, for one dozen donuts, it's like $15. Right. So, I mean, I got to get my money's worth. Uh-huh. So, um, so then we, we uh, get the car packed up. We get Hadley all packed up. And we go out. And it was just such a... Just like an exciting, like happy, like the one of the best feelings I've ever felt in my life, like carrying her out. Mm-hmm. And she looked um, so tiny in her car seat. Yeah. And and I took a video and sent it to my family because nobody really knew because, I mean, we were, we didn't really know, you no. know, what was going on. And for, for the most part, and um, I mean, obviously we knew like what we've already talked about, but like we weren't sure timeline wise, like what right. was going on or... Yeah, we didn't know we were going home until two hours before we were going home. Three hours. I mean, if before. yeah, something like that. When I drink, you can talk, or you can wait for me to. Oh, I was just gonna talk wait. again. I was just gonna uh, enjoy the silence. What are you trying to say? You talk too much. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it is a podcast. Yeah. You want to take over? You really stretch. I could. Go ahead. Next week, I'll be back, and I'll, I'll be by right myself. Now. No, no, no. <laughs> what would you talk about? If you had a podcast, what would the name Probably be? Probably my kids. Oh, I don't know about a name. I'd have to think that one over. <laughs> I'm trying to think of one right here on the spot. Crocheting with Kelly. Okay. By There's the way, nothing that you can by, talk about about crocheting. By the way, if you guys, um, if anybody out there, like your, I know Christmas is right around the corner. Um, Kelly has an amazing little shop. It's called, um, well, go ahead. Um, on Instagram, it's Finn period Marie period Spell crochet. It. F-I-N period M-A-R-I-E period crochet is C- crochet. R-O. Everybody knows how to spell crochet. Okay. Go Don't ahead. tell me to spell it and then say everybody knows how to spell it. I'm trying to help you. I'm giving you valuable <laughs> airtime. Anyway, and then um, on my Instagram, I have a link to my Etsy. If you're local to where we live, um, you can message me on Instagram and order it that way. Um, we live in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We live in Chattanooga. <laughs> so Saudi local, it right outside Chattanooga. If you're local, we can do it that way. Or you can message me and I can make you a listing on my Etsy if you are not local. And she makes really, really good stuff. And it's not, I mean, it's like professionally done. Like she was, there's a um, boat here in, in Chattanooga called the, Southern what is Bell. it? Southern Bell. Mm-hmm. And like, it's, it's a pretty big deal around here and they reached out to her and brought her in their shop. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, she does really, really good work. And, um, like she does stuff with our, uh, church for the Christmas, what is it called? Like Christmas the market, Christmas yeah. market and just different things like that. And so, um, if you're a parent out there and it's not, she could charge way more because of the quality and how good it is. I try to charge what I would want to pay. And plus, I like doing it, so... She could charge way more for the stuff. It's it's very high-quality stuff. She does a very, very good job. So, if you're a parent out there, um, and you, she can do, like, superheroes. Pretty She's much done anything you could think princesses, of. Princesses, fairies, aliens, mermaids. mermaids. Uh, she made our... did Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic the Hedgehog. She did uh, Paddington Bear. Mm-hmm. She's done... Um, for our son, he loves superheroes. So she did Spider-Man, Superman, Batman, I've done them all Hulk, yeah. Captain America. She's done all of them. So, um, she made a replica of our daughter. Mm-hmm. That was one of my first ones actually. Yeah. And that was very, very good. And, um, so yeah, the stuff that she could do is insane. She's very talented. And so, um, yeah, give her, check her out. Finn Marie crochet, on, crochet With on periods Instagram. between. With periods between, yeah, yeah. And um, so anyways, uh, after that plug. <laughs> uh, so we uh, get, her in the, get her in the car and we're going home. And that was like the longest ride. 
<laughs> yeah, ever. I was nervous to the point of being nauseous almost. Yeah. Because the kids obviously didn't know didn't we know. were coming home. I was coming home mm -hmm. and the baby was coming home. My parents didn't know. So I was nauseous. I just, I wanted to know what the kids were going to think, what they were going to say, especially Finley. And then the youngest one, I thought the youngest one, I was thinking, how is he going to react yeah. to a baby? Because he hasn't really been around a baby. And then obviously Finley's been wanting a girl for four years. She tells everyone. Um, so I was excited to see how she would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was all, it was very nerve wracking and exciting. And, um, about, uh, maybe about 10 minutes out, I told Kelly, I said, let's call your mom and I'll say, you know, I'm on the way, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, I have the kids ready, all that kind of stuff. And so I called Kelly's mom and, uh, which was a gamble because, you know, the baby could have cried at any moment. Yeah. And so I'm like, Hey, uh, you know, Kelly tell you I was on the way. Yeah. Yeah. She told me blah, blah, blah. And I said, can you put Finley on the phone for a second? So Finley got on there and, uh, I'm like, Hey, you know, are you having fun? Yeah. Can I stay here? And, uh, you know, at her Nana's house and I'm like, uh, no, no, you know, it's time to go home. And, uh, She's like, Nana doesn't care if I stay here. You could just get the boys. And yeah, Nana never cares. Yeah. And I'll, <laughs> I'll just stay here. I said, nah, you've been over there a couple of days. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can just come on home. And uh, she's like, ah, oh, yeah, okay. So she yeah. gives the phone back to Kelly's mom. And she's like, well, I really don't care if she stays over here, you know. And I'm like, well, we'll talk about when I get there. <laughs> and uh, so we get there and um, I get out of the car and then Kelly gets out of the car. And I, I think even though, you know, the kids are sitting there like dogs with their face pressed up against the glass, looking at us waving, you know, cause we hadn't seen them in days, four days, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And so then, uh, Kelly got out and that, I don't think they realized that the baby was with us. Yeah. I think that they thought I was just going to come home and we yeah. would figure it out from there. Yeah, they seemed kind of like they were looking at you, but they, it was like, oh, there's mom. Yeah, Finn like, said, mom? Yeah, you could <laughs> tell that they were kind of confused. And so, you know, get the baby out and take her in there. And, of course, everybody's shocked. Mm -hmm. Or mom excited. said, he has the baby. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I had to go around and get her. Yeah. 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 And then the kids got to hold her, and, mm -hmm. and Finley didn't want to put her down. Finley didn't want anybody else to... Oh, for the first few days, it was nonstop. Can I hold the baby? Can I hold the baby? Yeah. Well, like, still. Yeah. I'm a little bit of a baby hog now, though, just because with us one. having to be, yeah, the last baby plus us not being able to be with her for those days. Yeah. This baby's spoiled to being held now, which yeah. they say you can't spoil a baby by holding them, but she's held. Yeah. And she's all the time. <laughs> yeah. She's just such the, um, perfect period the perfect stop stopping point like the completion of our mm -hmm. family just her just already i mean she's only three weeks old but her personality you know her facial expressions you know she looks just like our boys and our daughter you I know there's she, she looks like landry and she looks the looks, most like landry yeah yeah at first i thought she was a mix of all of them now she's just landry with, i mean there's with some, yeah i mean there's sometimes that that I can see Finley. There's, mm -hmm. so I can see more Finley than Foster. Yeah. And then, but yeah, for the most part, it's That's it's Landry. Landry, and he is he's really surprised me the way he has taken to her uh -huh. as much as he has. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's been cool to see, but it's been it it was very exciting um, for me first of all to, and I'm just taking it back to that faith thing because um, I, that was what I was praying for leading up, and I even told Kelly. We were in the hospital, like, when we went back to the room, before we prayed, I said, this is my fault that she's in there. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, this is my fault because I prayed that um, the Lord would use her to build people's faith and to show, like, what he can do. And so just in the, the um, in her short little life, um, the way that she can, and first of all, before she was even born, like, Finley prayed that she'd be a girl and the Lord um heard Finley's prayer and allowed her to be a girl. And then also um, Kelly had some tests and stuff come up that were not favorable. And um, so she had to go in there and get a bunch of different 
uh, blood drawn and, and blood work and stuff like that. Cause we weren't sure if she was going to have to have like medication or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, we prayed for her and the Lord when, after she went back to get the testing that we thought could be, could not be good. Um, turns out that she was fine. Mm -hmm. And, um, so just in her through your pregnancy and her three little over three weeks of life, um, Already the way that the Lord has worked in her life um, is just, it's, a, it's awesome to me. And it's very like exciting. And just to know that like I prayed for that. And then obviously like it wasn't fun for us to have to go through that for a couple days, <laughs> you know, but you know, she's, she's fine and she's, you know, here with us and we're all, you know, well, I actually have a couple more things to say about being in the hospital now that I think about it. All right. Um, so I remember the first time that we went in to see her, uh, they had they were saying a prayer over the oh yeah yeah the intercom in the NICU, which you didn't hear, but I heard it when we were like washing to come in the first time. So I thought that that was pretty cool. And then there was that one day, I think it was Sunday, because um. We had said, one of the nurses said, how is, how is your baby doing? Cause all the nurses there, you know, knew mm -hmm. she was in the NICU and I had said, she's doing a lot better. They're saying that she's probably going to come home today. And then the nurse said it was uh, a good day in the NICU because a lot of the babies are getting to go home today. And when we went in, you know, you have to watch like a CPR video, like we said, before you go out and there was like two or three other families getting ready to watch the NICU video, I mean, the CPR video, and, like, packing their babies up, getting ready to go. And I remember Donovan saying, you know, since we've been praying so much, it's like touching all the babies in there. Because uh, you had said God was in there with Hadley, and that's that was, like, helping all the other babies as well. Yeah. It, so I thought our, that was kind of cool. Yeah, it was definitely, like, radiating through her because um, – just even um, like all the nurses and everybody that was like had anything to do with her. It was like, they were like um, drawn to her, you know, like they were all, everybody was always talking about her mm -hmm. saying something about her. Like, Oh, we're going to miss her. Like when they moved her from the nursery, I remember the first couple of nurses were like, Oh, we're, you know, I love her. That's my little baby, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. The nurse that caught it and had sent her to the nursery that eventually sent her to the NICU. Yeah. She said, I have an attachment to your baby. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it is. I have an attachment to your baby. Um, and I just, she was like about to, to be off of her shift when right. she sent Hadley to the nursery. And she said, I just couldn't do it. I have an attachment to your baby. And I just <laughs> wanted to make sure to like get her checked out before I went home. I couldn't, I couldn't just let her stay in your room thinking that something could be going on and me about to get off work. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. And, that's definitely and, yeah, true. And it was, yeah, it was several, several people saying, I mean, even to the point, like when, when we would go and hold Hadley, one of the nurses would like come over there and sit with us and talk with us and stuff. Yeah, Gail, <laughs> shout out to Gail. <laughs> we love yeah. her. Yeah, it was good. Everybody there was just top notch. It was, yeah. it was, uh, you know, they made the experience a lot easier for us. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, whenever they came up to tell us, give us updates and stuff like that, it never felt like anybody was talking down to us or anything like that. Yeah, it was very personal. Yeah, everybody there would talk to you like on a personal level, not like medically. Yeah, yeah, and it was. And I remember we went in there on uh, Saturday, and uh, Chase, one of the other. Mm -hmm. He nurses was a, or whatever. he was the respiratory person. Yeah, it was like just sitting in there watching football, and we were all like talking about football and stuff together. Not we all. I don't know anything about football. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was uh it was just a time that I'll never forget, and you know, thankful for everything that happened. You know, um, obviously not her having to go through that, but just that it it was just the way it went, how quickly she turned around. Because like mm -hmm. you said, anytime we went in there and they had news for us, it was, it was good news. It was never no, there was never any, we're not going the direction that we need to go. You know, I don't think we went in once and didn't hear good news. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was, yeah, it was. And then since leading up to it, 
She's been good. She had a doctor's appointment Tuesday. She's had two uh, doctor's appointments. Yeah. And they, they said, said she's she perfect. Good. And uh, She's still breathing a little, yeah. retracting a little bit, but we think mostly that's her lungs still healing up. So prayers would be good for that. Yeah. Um, but uh, her doctor said she's not worried about the way that uh, she's retracting now, that it's probably just her healing up. So. Yeah. Keep an eye on her, but she's good. Yeah. And has slept for the whole time. So, she's an angel baby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this I think this is my longest episode. We're almost at an hour and a half. Because you talk too much. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Uh, with the way you're... Like behavior is to me uh -huh, uh -huh. so far in this episode. I don't know that you're coming back on here. I already told you next week. It's just me. Solo. Oh, look, she's smiling. <laughs> she said, yeah, that's right. Talk about me for an hour and a half. Yeah. Uh, solo episode with me about crochet. I don't think I could talk about crochet that long. Hmm. Solo episode. I'm going to wing it. Wow. Okay. Same time next week. Same time Just next me. Week. Just you. Well, I guess we'll wrap it up unless you have anything else you want to you want to save it for your solo episode there. <laughs> I gotta start thinking. Yeah. No, I don't have anything else. Yeah. But um yeah, so we hope you guys <laughs> What? You really screamed that butt. I'm but... emphasizing. I'm <laughs> emphasizing. Uh yeah, so we hope you guys enjoyed our journey through <laughs> uh, the couple weeks leading up to her being born and then our time in the hospital the time after hopefully it was entertaining for you to listen to and interesting hopefully it was faith building because i feel like that's what um one of the reasons why the lord laid on my heart to write as so much as much as i wrote in there because i wrote anytime we were in the room by ourselves you know i would get my notebook out and write a little bit and i didn't read i read a lot of it tonight but as I wrote a lot more, but it's just um, any chance that I get, I feel like with this podcast um, to point people to Christ and to build people's faith and to encourage people. That's what I want to try to do. And um, so I just hope that in hearing this and hearing about Hadley and the way that um, they were saying, you know, basically if she doesn't respond to what's going on, it could be 14 days mm -hmm. and for her to just be in the NICU for, really for two full days yeah, like two, two and a half, and a half days. yeah it was just there's just no other explanation for it than um all the prayers and god putting his his hand on her and healing that lung up as quick as he did so we're very thankful we're very excited and evidently this won't be the last time you hear from kelly so with that being said hope you guys enjoy this god bless you guys same time next week for Kelly's episode. <laughs> Y'all have a good week. God bless. <laughs>